So Nisha, what's your favourite joke from Airplane? I can't remember his name, but the guy gets in the plane and the woman says, are you nervous? And he says, yeah. And then she says, first time? And he goes, no, I've been nervous lots of times. <laughs> nervous? Yes. First time. No, I've been nervous lots of times. The film Airplane! Exclamation Point is widely considered one of the funniest films ever made, and is noteworthy for launching the comedy career of Leslie Nielsen. An impressive feat considering that the film was, for all intents and purposes, a shot-for-shot -shot remake of a serious drama film. Okay, so the, the film Airplane made Leslie Nielsen known as, like, a comedy actor, but he was a serious actor before then? He was, yeah, and a lot of people don't know this. Uh, Leslie Nielsen, uh, you know, lovable goofball from some of the best comedies ever made, and, like, Spy Hard, was a serious actor for about 30 fucking years before he appeared in Airplane. We can get to the reasons why he ended up being cast in Airplane in a moment. But, like, not only was he a serious actor, he was also a heartthrob, because he was really fucking handsome in his younger days, and presumably there'll be a picture behind me right now in one of his earlier film roles, where he's just... He's so fucking good looking. He's just beaming pure sex into your eyes. Like, I'm assuming you have a picture of him in front of you now. Should you have the article, yes? Yeah. Look at him. And what I want whoever edits this video to do now is to contrast with the picture behind me of just this fucking Cadillac of men, like Leslie Nielsen pulling a goofy face in one of his later movies. Long story short, Leslie Nielsen was a big dick movie star for many years and women will fall head over heels with him. And then he somehow transformed from that to this, thanks to Airplane. How was he cast in a comedy film when he was known as a serious drama actor? Well, that's kind of the reason he was cast, and according to the directors and the writers of Airplane, um, Zucker, Abram Zucker, uh, Leslie Nielsen's casting was an intentional decision, as was the casting of almost every other actor in the film, who were all, at the time, known for serious drama roles. It would only emerge during production that Leslie Nielsen had always wanted to be a comedic actor, and had fallen into more serious acting roles because of how handsome he was. So they always put him forward as a leading man, but he hated being a leading man. He always wanted to do comedy, but could never break into it. And the casting of Nielsen and the discovery of his comedic timing and chops was one of those like, lightning in a bottle moments for Hollywood. Where like, we've got something special here because he was fucking amazing at it. And arguably one of the greatest comedic actors of all time, thanks to those 30 years of serious drama acting, which allowed him to deliver the most ridiculous lines with utmost sincerity, which is kind of the point. <laughs> and before we move on, we will be remiss if we didn't just like, just share some favourite Leslie Nielsen quotes. So Nisha, do you have a, a personal favourite quote from the late, great Mr Nielsen? Obviously one of the classics is where he asks that guy if he can fly the plane. I already know the line. And the guy says, surely you can't be serious. I am. And don't call me Shirley. Oh, it's so good. Can you fly this plane and land it? Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. But one of mine comes from Police Squad, which is a, a short-lived TV show that he was in, we've talked about before. Where it simply, he just knocks on a lady's door and goes, oh, I'm sorry, madam, we would have come earlier, but your husband wasn't dead then. And it's just delivered <laughs> so straight. <laughs> <laughs> that is fucking brilliant. I was sorry to bother you at a time like this, Mrs. Twice. We would have come earlier, but your husband wasn't dead then. All right, so you said before they only hired serious actors to star in this comedy film. They did, yes, for the same reason that Nielsen ended up being so hilarious in his later career. Because serious actors could deliver stupid lines of a straight face, which, they th which the directors thought would be funnier. Because when they first started auditioning for the role, a lot of comedians put themselves forward. And comedians always try to read the lines in a funny way, which Zucker, Abram and Zucker didn't like, because the lines are funny enough on their own, you don't need to play them up. Just read them out as they're written. And comedic actors couldn't do that, but serious ones could. An idea epitomised by Nielsen's later career as a result of his role in that film. Uh, my favourite example of that being the line, Nice Beaver. Nice Beaver. Thank you. I just had it stuffed. Let me help you with that. One of the things he enjoyed doing was maintaining that cast iron deadpan facade while he was talking with people. And we've discussed briefly before that he had a fart machine constructed by a prop guy he was friends with, which literally just made fart noises. <laughs> and what he would do is during interviews on TV, 
would, when he's discussing the craft of acting and his dedication to it, would like cross his legs over and just like, <laughs> without breaking character and just look for the interviewer to break down and see how much he could push it. And the story goes that before he got that specially constructed fart machine, he would use a whoopee cushion. And according to someone who works on the movie, Nielsen could play it like a virtuoso. He was a master of getting people with the whoopee cushion and it never ceased to make him laugh every time. Like you would be recording a scene <laughs> with him, you go to sit down, the whoopee cushion would go off, he'd just lose it, he loved it. And yes, it's juvenile and yes, it's crass, but it's so innocent and wholesome, you kind of love it. You kind of got to respect it, haven't you? That the one thing that he like, adored doing more than anything else was just making fart jokes and placing whoopee cushions under people's chairs to such an extent, his own grave has a fart joke written on it. So what's this about Airplane being based on a serious film? Well, it was, and that film is a largely forgotten film from the 1950s called Zero Hour Exclamation Point. And according to Zucker, Abrams and Zucker, that film is so formulaic, you could use it to teach film structure to students. I'm guessing the reason no one's ever heard of Zero Hour is because it's so generic. Yeah, it's such a cliched formulaic film, it doesn't really stand out in any discernible way. And Zucker, Abrams and Zucker happened upon it while they were reviewing tapes they'd made. Because something Zucker, Abrams and Zucker would do in the 1980s is just record hours and hours and hours of television that they could then watch to find stuff to parody and riff on. And one of these tapes just so happened to include a recording of Zero Hour, which they fast forwarded through to get to the commercials. But after a while, they found themselves just watching the movie and decided as a group that it'd be kind of interesting to make the movie again, but put jokes in it. Yeah. And that was kind of the humour of the, the um, Zucker, Abrams and Zucker. So there's a great story, I think, that demonstrates just how committed they were to dumb jokes, which is after they became a big deal, thanks to stuff like Airplane, um, they invested a bunch of money in a horse, which they called It's All Pink. They then instructed the rider of It's All Pink not to win, but to hug the inside of the track, yeah. purely so the announcer would have to say over the tannoy, it's all pink on the inside. Yeah, I think nothing sums up how committed they were to making dumb jokes more than that. So bringing it back to Airplane, that film is based entirely off Zero Hour. Yeah, it is essentially a shot-for-shot -shot remake of Zero Hour with some jokes thrown in. And in some cases, there's not even jokes, it's just Leslie Nielsen repeating lines that are in the film, which are then made funny because they're being read by Leslie Nielsen. An example of which is no doubt going to follow this very sentence. The life of everybody aboard depends on just one thing. Finding someone back there who not only can fly this plane, but who didn't have fish for dinner. The life of everyone on board depends upon just one thing. Finding someone back there who can not only fly this plane, but who didn't have fish for dinner. And as an example of how closely they copied Zero Hour, even the title of the film Airplane is an allusion to it because if you look at the title of the film Airplane, which is no doubt behind me as I'm speaking, you'll notice it has an exclamation point. You know, we think, well, why does it have an exclamation point? The answer is because the film Zero Hour has an exclamation point after it to make it sound more exciting, which Zucker, Abrams and Zucker found quite funny. So they made sure that Airplane also had an exclamation point on it. Okay, it seems funny, but because they've copied the film shot for shot, it seems like they're on shaky grounds, like legally. Yeah, that was apparently behind the scenes a big worry for the production company because there is a fine line between parody and just straight up ripping something off. And there are conflicting reports about whether or not the film would have been covered under parody law. Um, but what we do know for sure is that just to make sure that they wouldn't get sued, Zucker, Abrams and Zucker just bought the rights to Zero Hour. <laughs> really? We reported $2,500. The studio who owned it gave so few shits they signed over the rights for basically nothing in Hollywood terms, which apparently Zucker and Zucker also found very funny because they then owned the rights to option a remake of the film. <laughs> and they used those rights to make a parody, but it's a parody of a film no one had ever seen. And to add another layer to this comedic onion metaphor, Zero Hour was such a forgotten film that even after Zucker, Abram and Zucker bought the rights to it, so that they could parody it. When the film was released, people assumed that it was a parody of another film. <laughs> I don't think anything sums up how unfounded the fears of lawyers were, that they'd be sued for copyright infringement. More than people thinking Airplane was a parody of another film. So today's video has, in a roundabout way, been a discussion 
one of the greatest parody films of all time. And I've spoken multiple times on the channel about Not Another Teen Movie, which is a guilty pleasure of mine. So in that vein niche, are there any of those crappy parody movies that you kind of liked, even though you probably shouldn't because they're not that great? <laughs> yeah, I used to really like Date Movie. Oh no, oh god, you just go straight, you went straight for the W there, Nisha. I know. But you didn't even say <laughs> so Scary bad. Movie, which was okay up until the third one. You just went straight yeah. for Date Movie, fuck yeah. yeah. I don't even think I saw that one. Can you quote a single joke? Um. <laughs> that's the tr that's a true test. Can you quote a single joke from that entire film? I can't remember like any quotes specifically, but I remember the <laughs> character names. That sums names. it up. I remember like the character names because they were parodying... Um, they were taking the piss out of, like, meet the parents, meet the fuckers. Ah, uh, okay, so, so what are the ones they use? So, like, the one of the characters' names is Grant Fuck Your Daughter. <sighs> so that is the only thing that I remember, <laughs> which isn't even no. that funny. It's not. There was one uh, joke, though, I think, which was okay. I mean, it's not okay. that funny, but they go, like... High praise. On a, the main characters are on a date, and they go to a restaurant, and it's called a restaurant. That's what it's called. That's, That's it. good. That's strong. <laughs> That's like uh, one of those background jokes, which is one of the reasons I really love Not Another Teen Movie. Because like date movie and epic movie and all those, they were so cheaply made and there was very clearly no love or craft that went into them. Yeah. Which I contend is different for Not Another Teen Movie because every single scene, it's, it's very airplane-esque mm. in a sense, that there is always a joke happening on screen an example that springs to mind being a shot during a football game, which shows someone getting tackled um, into a, a crowd of extras. And the, and the shot lasts for about a second and a half. And if you look closely, you'll see that one of the characters has written on the back of their jersey, extra. That, I think, elevates the film above those bad parody movies. Like yeah. the date, your date movies, your epic movies and stuff like that. Because they didn't need to do that, but they did. And there's other ones like every poster in the background has something funny written on it. And there's a joke written on every poster in the background. And it's one of those you can go back and look for and go, oh, wow, there, there's a joke in every single shot of the entire movie, but you, you don't really see it much. Very similar to Airplane, which has a lot of background jokes people miss. And it's one of the reasons that that movie's held up so well, because you can watch it multiple times and see something new each time. The best background joke being one that is present in almost every single shot of the movie that virtually nobody noticed that being the sound of a droning propeller in the background of almost every scene, even though they're in a jet. <laughs> every single shot set like that is inside the plane yeah. has the sound of a droning propeller, even though they're <laughs> on a jet. Speaking of like, those bad movies, I've talked before about Scary Movie 3, which, yeah. uh, which was directed by the Zuckers, I think, and had the script partially rewritten by them, which is why I contend that Scary Movie is the best one. Because it, again, features some of those really just subtle background jokes that you'd miss on a first viewing. Uh, for example, a shot where a character's about to get on a bus to go to a, a rap battle, and the bus just says, Da Hood on it. The reason I bring this up is so we could put in perhaps the greatest shot in any comedy movie ever, and it's where the main male character is babysitting for, I think it's Cindy. And Cindy's just like, are you going to be okay looking after uh, this kid? And he's oh, no, I'm great with kids. Look, heads up. He throws a basketball, which hits the kid in the face, and he goes down like a sack of shit. I'm great with kids. Heads up, Cody. And then he runs over to help him up, but accidentally knees him in the face, and his head cracks into the, like, the hardwood floor, and the foley on it's perfect. And then he tries to pick him up to help him, and he accidentally raises him into a ceiling fan. Get a boy. It gets me every single time because they smash cut to a shot of a window through which a dummy is thrown at half the speed of sound. <laughs> and it's just, it's so sudden and so quick and so unexpected. It slays me every single time I see it. And it's just, oh, you're going to be okay. <laughs> it's just, it's yeah. so good. You put it in every movie.